Uh, welcome to uh, our presentation tonight. I'm actually going to turn my video off as well, so you don't have to see my face. Okay, there we go. All right. I promise I'm usually more adept at this than it seems tonight. Um, so welcome. Like I said, I'm Dusty Davidson from Showtime Travel Agency. There's our contact information. If you have any questions um, or would like to schedule a trip based on what you see in here tonight, then uh, by all means, give us a call or you can email me. The email is ddavidson at dreamvacations.com. And we'd be happy to, uh, if I'm not able to help you out, then we've got somebody else here that can help. Uh, so we're, we're anxious to get you traveling again. So tonight, um, our Travel Tuesday with is how to travel for free or close to it <laughs> with group travel. And we'll talk about free and what free means here in just a second, because it might mean different things to different people. So um, before we get into the whole uh, guts of it all, I'm gonna tell you what this is not about. This is not any sort of uh, multi-level marketing program where you recruit people and they recruit people and they get benefits and you get benefits. There is some recruiting going on like that, but that doesn't, but it's not like a multi level uh, marketing program or any sort of pyramid scheme or anything like that. Um, there's no money involved that you're going to get paid for or other people get paid for. Um, it's not a get rich quick program. <laughs> so, you know, if it were, I would be in a maybe a different place than I am right now. Um, but it is a, a way for you to travel and to travel for free. And again, free, when I say free, is, is basically saying it doesn't cost you money. It's going to cost you some time and effort, but it, you can get uh, some trips out of it where you are not having to pay for your trip. And that's really what it, it's, it's about. Um, so, and just like, you know, you sign up for a lot of these things. I'm not, I don't have a book to sell you at the end of it all. I'm not going to give you just enough information and then say you have to pay, you know, $19.99 to get the rest of the information. I'm going to give you all the information that I have, um, which is a lot, <laughs> you'll see tonight, um, and hope that you, you know, get some ideas from that, make contact with us, and we can talk you through how to really make that uh, come to fruition for you, okay? So this isn't a hard sell of anything. You're, you're, we're not going to beg you for money tonight, so um, you can sit back and relax on all of that. So what this is, though, is a way for you to benefit from what group travel and travel companies have to offer. And when I mentioned group travel, you probably, uh, oops, oh. you're, you're actually going to wind up being like a host or an escort for a group. And you can travel for free or just a fraction of the cost. Um, the, the whole thing about group travel is when you talk about that, you know, when you think of your travel, you might think of, uh, you know, the 1950s and 60s. I've got a, a picture of, uh, if it's Tuesday, it must be Belgium over here on the screen. Um, and that's what you might think of when you think of group travel. You might think of um, what was called um, an older crowd <laughs> to, to tra that travels. Uh, or student groups. And that's usually, you know, what, what most people think of when they think of group travel. And that's, you know, pretty much how it started out originally in the 50s and 60s and on up in the 70s and 80s was it was either senior groups that were traveling, all these retired people traveling around the world together on a bus or students all in their uniforms going to all these different places and, and you know, mostly wreaking havoc. But that's not what it is anymore. It used to, it, it also used to be very expensive. Um, so there was only a certain level of income or person that could travel. Um, the itineraries used to be pretty superficial. You didn't spend a lot of time in places. Um, I know one tour I took back in the day when it was more about, you know, older groups and students, we were one day in a, in a town and then the next day we were on a bus the entire day and then we spent a day on it. So our 10 day trip was really only five real vacation days, because five of those days we were on a bus getting to the next location. And so the itinerary seemed to be very superficial. You would go you would go buy places and look at them, but you wouldn't actually be able to go into them because you didn't have time. Um, and so the itineraries used to be very, very superficial. And like I said, there's usually lots of bus time involved with all of that. So um, it really, you know, wasn't anything that we would want to do nowadays, I don't think, because you had minimal choices of what you could do uh, with itineraries and no freedom to choose, uh, you know, going here or going there. There wasn't a lot of free time involved with all those. So it was very superficial and it was just kind of like, here's a little glimpse of what you could do if you're traveling by yourself. 
uh, is really what the trips used to be like. Okay, let's another event scene. There we go. So, what group travel is now? Well, it's changed a lot. Right now, it's uh, there's something for all ages, multi generations combined, or different age groups throughout, and a varied interest. You can see some of the, the different things we have there on the left. If you are a bicycling group, and that's a bicycling group of varied ages in there, um, there are tours for that that you can do now, uh, not only in the United States, but in Europe and, and Africa, um, you know, hiking and walking tours. So there really is um, a wide variety of stuff now. Um, the group sizes vary. You're not, you're not always going to be crammed on a bus with 48 of your not dearest friends. Um, there are groups now that you can travel for as small as six, and with those six, you get a seventh for free. So it doesn't have to take up a lot, you know, these big buses that you see going through town. Um, there are small African safaris that, you know, you, you get, you book six people and you get a seventh spot free. And that can be you <laughs> if you want to want to go. Um, and there's a wider range of tours, uh, obviously from the ones I, ju I just mentioned. Um, really, if there's an interest out there, there is a tool for that now. And a wide range of budgets that they can, it, they can be very, very cheap. Um, or they can, you know, if you are into luxury travel, then they are, there are some luxury uh, groups out there um, that will take that money and, you know, and put you in the, the best of the best, uh, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And group travel is now customizable. Back before, you didn't have a lot of choice. They had a set itinerary, as superficial as it was, and you were stuck with that. Um, but now you have the, the ability to customize your trips um, and customize group tours. And we'll talk a little bit more about the customization part later. So how I got started with uh, group travel was, well, here we go. Here's just a small portion of the 42 students I took to London one year. <laughs> I had this great idea that as a teacher, having my summers off, I was going to be able to travel the world in the summers, and it was going to be amazing. I didn't really think about the fact that on a first-year teacher's salary and with tons of student loans, I couldn't afford to travel. So the only way that I could travel was if I took students with me. And so um, I got to see through my 29 years of, of education how the group process changed um and uh how how it, it evolved and uh the itineraries have changed and everything so it really is kind of uh i've been excited about how it has gotten better and better through through the years so um you know i love traveling with kids but that is a lot of work <laughs> particularly teenagers um you know it, it sets up for a lot of issues a lot um, so it turned out to be a lot of work and not necessarily um the vacation that I had really wanted it to be. But it did give me a good idea of what group travel was like and how it all worked. So why group travel? If I just gave you a very horrible picture of it, why would you want to do group travel? Well, we tend to be a very community-driven society now. Um, you know, you, you could say that we've always been that way if you talk about the different tribes that, you know, date back to, you know, indigenous tribes uh, throughout the world. Um, but if you look at Facebook, Facebook has groups and there are currently tens of millions of groups on Facebook. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. It, I, you know, you, I am a member of, I don't you know, a couple of hundred groups myself, which is ridiculous that I can, you know, try and keep up with that all day. But it does give you a sense of connection with other people, people throughout the world, um, people that have the same interests as you. And so whether you are a Basset Hound lover like me and a member of like 15 different Basset Hound groups, <laughs> or maybe you love to knit and you are part of a knitters group on Facebook, we, those are the things that we typically go, are drawn to in our feeds on Facebook. And uh, even Mark Zuckerberg has said that the community portion of Facebook, the group portion of that is probably the future of Facebook. Um, there's also an ease and comfort that uh, you, when you're experiencing group travel, that you're not experiencing alone. Um, you, you go places and you, having that shared experience um, is it makes it deeper and more meaningful to you and to the people you're with. And so whether you're really close to the people that you're traveling with or they just, you know, are friends that you made on the, on the trip, there is that sense of 
um, experiencing something with somebody else that you're not alone in what, what you see and uh, being able to share those thoughts, those feelings immediately um, is something that is, is valuable for uh, travelers emotionally um, each, as we go. Okay, why? Oops. Yeah, let's do it that way if it's not. Okay. Um, group travel technically is safer if you look at the statistics. Um, you know, as far as, yeah, you're going to have your, you know, pickpockets and things like that. But as far as violent crimes, you're much safer in a, a group, um, whether it's a group of 10 or a group of 40. Um, violent crime tends to, to happen more on individuals than on large traveling groups like that. So you tend to be a lot safer in numbers. So um, that's another good reason to travel. Groups tend to have more access to things, um, whether it is an after hours concert in a, a museum or uh, you know, before op or, or cut the line at the Vatican to go see the Sistine Chapel. Um, groups tend to have a lot more access than an individual walking up to, uh, to something that they're visiting. So if you're thinking, no, this is still something kind of interesting and I, I think I might want to start and get me a free trip somehow, how do I start? Well, the first thing you need to do is just to find your purpose. Why are you putting a group together? Now, you know, ultimately your thought may be, well, I want to go on a free trip, but um, that's not going to sell to people. So you have to define the purpose of what the trip that you're putting together and your purpose for doing it. So it could be for education. Uh, you know, maybe there is a workshop that you wanted that people want might be interested in uh, in Venice. They do uh, art workshops there, mosaics. Maybe that's something that you have an art group that you think might be interested in, or a special event. You know, Oberammergau is coming up in 2022. That happens once every 10 years. So that's a special event that you might have a group of people that are very interested in going and, and attending. It may be for sheer entertainment. Uh, you, you know, there are groups that have been put together just to follow a, a, a band that they liked, <laughs> you know, to two or three stops on their tour and they would travel, you know, travel from place to place and go to the concert three or four times. Um, so it could be just, you know, for inter entertainment purposes. Um, social opportunities. You know, maybe you've got a group to, of people that are um, acquaintances, but not real close. And so this is an opportunity for them to get to know each other better. Um, you get together frequently, but you, you, that that connection is just not completely made yet. Or uh, travel can really help, uh, you know, make those solid connections. Oh, there we go again. Um, if you're part of an organization, it might be that you are to help publicize the organization and get their name out there to uh, other people, um, or a fundraiser. And we'll talk a little bit more about the, the fundraiser and the publicity portion of it later, but you can actually use travel to raise money for uh, an organization. So here's something I'm going to throw at you. So if you were to travel, what is what is the purpose of your travel or travel group? If you had to think of something off the top of your head, what would you want it to be of those choices I gave you? This can be slightly participatory tonight. <laughs> So would you do, do you think you do entertainment? Would you do, do I need to go back to those so you can see the choices there? What would your purpose be? Would it be for education? Is there a special event you're thinking of for entertainment, a social opportunity? Or do you have an organization that you wanna raise money for or get their name out there? Let's see what people say. Education, special event. Yeah, and it can be a combination of special events. Sorry, I shouldn't probably shouldn't be showing that. <laughs> um, it could be a combination of special events uh, and inter education. It, it doesn't have to be one. It could be, it could serve multiple purposes. And that's kind of the thing with travel. There is a lot of flexibility in the reasons that you, you go, uh, or not flexibility, but a lot of variety in the reasons that you go. And it doesn't have to, to be just one. So if you have a fundraiser that you're doing and it, what you want it to make an educational trip as well, you know, that works. Um, in fact, it's probably going to sell even better that way, the more of those boxes that you can tick. Okay, so continuing on. So 
what is your passion and what are your interests? So anywhere you want to go, you want to make it something that is going to be, I don't want to say beneficial to you, but something that you're interested in at least going and doing. It's going to make it easier for you to uh, develop, you know, show that passion for something that you're interested in um, as opposed to something that you're not. Uh, you're going to be able to recruit people to go with you easier that way. So what is it that you're interested in? Um, you know, Oberon or Gauss, that, that's um, the one that we've mentioned a couple of times already. Is it, are you a theater person? And that's why you want to go see it because it has such a historical aspect, uh, theater, you know, for the theater um, and development theater throughout the years, or is it more of the religious aspect of it all? Um, you know, something that's more of a pilgrimage in that way. Think about those things because finding the reasons why like that are going to be really, really important in how you present it and sell it to others and how you can help recruit people. And it's got to be something that you really are interested in or it's not going to work. Um, yeah. Where do you want to go? If your interest is in quilting, that's great. Um, where do you want to go quilt at? <laughs> so, you know, that, that, that seems a little bit random. We're gonna, we're, well, I should talk about something uh, similar to that later on, too. But is there a particular place you want to go? That could be how you start your trip. Okay, this is where I want to go. It's someplace I've always wanted to be. Well, why do I want to go there? What interests me about it? And then, you know, developing those ideas, maybe answer all these questions is going to help you develop the why for your group. Um, and also think about what groups are you already a member of? Um, are you a member of a fraternity from a college? Um, are you a, a member of an alumni group? Um, are you part of a gardening club? Um, those groups are actually great places to start finding ideas for group travel because you already have the groups kind of pre-made there for you. It's just a matter of how do you incorporate you know, their interests and their ideas uh, for the group into a group travel experience. And it's actually could be you know, very, quite e very easy if, uh, once you get to it. So here's what I want you to think about now. So write down or, their, or name, think about five to 10 groups that you're a part of. Um, it can be a church group. It can be uh, your know, colleagues at work. That, that's a group of people is your colleagues at work. Um, maybe you have a group of uh, girls in the neighborhood that you go shopping periodically. Um, do you play tennis? Are you part of a tennis club or golf club? That's a group. So think about that for just a minute and we'll see what answers you come up with. Okay, feel free to put that in chat or the comments on Facebook. Let's see. My cursor's not there. A gardening group. Yeah, and there's, there's a couple of things coming up uh, with gardening that I'm going to mention later on that you might want to pay attention to, Robert. <laughs> Anybody else have ideas? Let's see, uh, let's look at the face. Uh, church group and doing like the footsteps of Jesus. Yeah, there's lots of, uh, yeah, faith-based travel is really, really big right now. Um, so that, that's certainly something, you know, the footsteps of Jesus is, is one. You can do just the general um, Holy Land tours. Um, there's also, you know, following the steps of Paul and, and where, and, you know, the places he uh, went in, in the Bible and stuff. Um, what else have we got here? Let's see. Oh, that was my Siri talking to me. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, a genealogy trip somewhere. Yeah, and that's uh, genealogy is really a big one too. Um, you know, and you might think about it in two different ways. One is it a genealogy trip for people who are looking at their genealogy? Um, or is it a family, reu family reunion type situation where you're doing kind of a, a your family genealogy? And you can kind of look at it two different ways and develop two different trips that way. Um, Ireland right now is 
really huge with uh, genealogy and th those trips. They have centers set up where groups can come and, and research their families. Um, so if you've got some Irish heritage, that's, that's certainly a good trip to do uh, there. Um, a crafter's cruise. Yeah, it, it, crafter's cruises are big. Um, there's a lot of those already around, uh, already happened. So, you know, joining one of those is, might be fun, but if you create it on your own, you know, you, you reap the benefits of it rather than somebody else. So that's always a, a good one. So anything like that is always a good thing, good kind of a good place to start. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The Edinburgh Fringe Fest. Ah. <laughs> That's somebody who knows me. Who, who said that? Um, yeah, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival is uh, fantastic, and, and getting a. I've, I've been trying to get a group. Of, I was. I actually had a group of theater teachers um, that were going to go with me this past year, and it fell through, obviously because of COVID and and uh, and the, all, everything being canceled and shut down. But um, that's still on the list of things to do. So, yeah, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival is a good one. What else have we got here? Um, Edinburgh Fringe, yeah, it's, it's good. That's, yeah, I, I love Edinburgh. It's one of my favorite, favorite places. And I will take as many groups there as I want to go. So, okay, so we'll move on a little bit now. Um, yeah, we already dropped them in the chat and comments. So, um, yeah, so here's some other examples if you, you're having trouble thinking things. Um, you know, if you, at, at church, if you've got, uh, you know, even within church, you've got different groups in, in your church. Um, most, particularly if you're going to a, a larger church, um, you might have an empty nesters group or a singles group or anything like that within the church. That is, you know, even a more specialized group uh, that you can get together for like a Holy Land tour or anything like that. Um, foodies, you know, if you know a bunch of foodies uh, and you, you can you meet with on you know meet up or, or or anything um you can get them together and go take cooking classes in italy um or or, or lots of different regions um especially out france has lots of good cooking classes spain um so you can ben certainly benefit from those um I, I mentioned this earlier and had the picture earlier about a biking group if you you know have a group of people that you go biking with every sunday morning um you know that's a group there and there are now companies that specialize in bike tours um, where you can travel through uh, different parts, different countries and, and not only, you know, different states as well. You can do it here in the United States, but also different countries in Europe and, and Africa. Um, wine lovers, if you love wine, then there is a cruise for you somewhere. Um, wine cruises are very big, ocean cruises and on uh, river cruises. So that's always a good group um, if you know a lot of people are interested in wine. And I think I mentioned the tennis club earlier. It can be, it doesn't have to be these big trips going overseas. Make it a big experience here, uh, you know, going to the US Open, um, you know, getting that group together and heading out to New York to, to, to see the matches there. You know, that's a great idea for a group. Um, and this is something that you might not have ever thought of either, but a volunteer group. If you've got a group of volunteers that um, go and, you know, service other areas of, of the city or state it also is a group that could also travel somewhere else too so um you can get a volunteer group and go help build a school in nepal so there is volunteerism related to group travel um, it doesn't have to always be about um going and having a good time uh, obviously you'll have a good time with the volunteer group as well but it, it isn't about just um vacation it can be about going and servicing um underprivileged areas and, and also that's that's always a good one so how do you get to go for free well you get to be the organizer and leader of the group you get to be the pied piper we call it so um instead of leading you know rats and children out of town you get to you know bring people into the fold to, for your group the groups can be um again like i mentioned as small as six people or as you know as many as 50 or, or more depending on you know the tour and the tour company that you might be working with um, with prepackaged tours and cruises, companies will offer what's called a TC or a tour conductor credit. And so those are applied for a certain number of full paying passengers and the full paying is kind of an important phrase in there. So uh, going back to uh, what I was saying about the six, so it's going to Africa. So if you have six people that pay full fare on this Africa African safari, then there is one paid slot for free. Now, 
you kind of have to read the fine print in that because it could be just the basic uh, land portion that's paid for, or it could be airfare and land portion. So that's kind of where it gets a little bit trickier um, with the, are, is it really going to be traveling for free? Um, but it's always, it, it'll be at least, you know, greatly discounted this way. So prepackaged tours and cruises are the easiest way to, uh, to do this, uh, to get, you know, yourself into some free travel. Um, the range can really, for the full paying passengers, it's going to be somewhere between six and 24, again, depending on the company. Um, I haven't seen anything that's, that's above 24 as far as getting that first free slot um, for, the, for the TC, uh, nothing like 30 or, you know, have to fill up the entire bus before you get one for free. And there are sometimes benefits for, uh, you know, additional slots that you might, might earn. Um, yeah, so back to the virtually free. Um, you know, I mentioned the airfare might not be covered. And that's something that um, could be dealt with in a different way. Uh, typically with cruises, if you get a group on a cruise um, and you get that TC slot, it's going to be for the actual cruise fare. It, it's not going to cover the uh, taxes and port fees. So that would still have to come out of your own pocket. But if you're getting, a, you know, $1,700, $1,800 cruise paid for and you're only going to have to pay like $195 for or less for the taxes and port fees. That's still a really good deal on that that trip. Um, and there are th there are ways to work around this. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. Um, yeah, and I just mentioned all that. So with all this, there are also opportunities that you can get paid if you do it do all of this yourself. Um, and that's going to be something we'll talk about later. We can you do. If you plan everything, you don't use a travel agent, you don't use a tour company, you do it yourself, there is a way to make money off of it, but it gets into some tricky issues there. So you've decided what your purpose is, you've decided the group that you want to take with you, um, where you want to go and that idea. So here's the question now. What are you going to do? Are you going to take a prepackaged tour through a travel agency or a tour company? Are you going to do a customized tour through a travel agent or tour company? Or are you just going to create your own on your own? Those are your basic three options. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons of each of those. For prepackaged tours, there's lots of pros. One, all the reservations and everything are done for you. You just basically have to like recruit people and show up. <laughs> okay, you're generally going to get better pricing uh, with a prepackaged tour. Uh, you are not as Oh, where to go? Um, you're not going to be as well known to uh, the hotels and the suppliers as a tour as a tour company or a travel agent. So they're going to work better prices and they're going to have bigger, better negotiating power than you might have, particularly your first time out. Um, sometimes deposits aren't required immediately, um, which is great because that limits like the financial aspect that you kind of that you have to get all these people to pay and and. You know, making sure everything's organized and meeting a deadline. So uh, having that time is um, really valuable to you as a group leader. Um, with everything being taken care of and not having to worry about, you know, the deposits quite up, up front there, um, you can spend more time recruiting travelers than doing paperwork and other operational duties that are required of a travel agent or a tour company, or if you were doing it all by yourself, you're not going to have to be working on the reservations and calling and correcting things and, and you know, fixing things as they uh, pop up. So you're free to just recruit travelers to go with you. You're also not going to be responsible if something goes terribly wrong on the trip. You know, we, it, it happens. A bus will break down. That is just the nature of travel and the nature of life. Um, you know, your car breaks down. It's, it's just something that happens. If you're on a prepackaged tour, you don't have to worry about it. It's not you that's trying to find another bus to come pick you up and take you somewhere. It's the tour company that's doing that. So you just get to sit back and relax and try and keep everybody happy on the trip, laugh about it and not have to worry about it. So there's a, that aspect alone is, is huge as far as uh, you know, doing prepackaged tours. Um, any liability falls on the travel agent and tour company, like kind of in relationship to you know the, the bus breaking down. If something, God forbid, should go horribly, horribly wrong, um, you're not going to be liable for it. It's going to be the travel agent or the tour company. I'm talking something beyond you know just the bus breaking down and you're being delayed. If um, you know somebody 
falls and breaks their leg. I mean, that alone is, is that can set so, you know, some liability issues up, but you're not have, you're off the hook for that because that will fall on the travel agent or the tour company. Um, there will be a tour guide. So you can relax more even when you get off the bus and you're going somewhere, there's gonna be somebody to guide you around. Um, you don't have to figure out how to get from, you know, walk from here to there. You're just gonna to have to follow the fold like, like a regular tourist. Um, so you actually get to enjoy the benefits of traveling and being a tourist rather than being in charge and, you know, having like me with those kids in London, <laughs> you know, it was, it was a lot of work it was hurting cats. And it's the same thing with adults and a lot of times too. So even with your adult groups, um, but you don't have to worry so much about that on a prepackaged tour because there's tour guides there, they're taking care of everything. You're just, you know, one of the folks who gets to take credit for, um, uh, getting everybody there and they, they take, uh, all the responsibility for it. And you also get to pass the buck. You're not going to be the one who's going to be responsible for answering all the questions. Um, so you get a group together. Uh, somebody has a question. You're like, you know what? <laughs> I'm not the point of contact. And there will be, there's a point of contact with the tour company or your travel agent is the, the point of contact. So you get to pass the buck on all the questions and all the, the craziness that somebody might, you know, Put, might normally put you through is passed on to somebody else. You don't have to worry about that. Your, your basic job is to get people to sign up, people you know to sign up. Now, the cons of all of that is going to be you have little or no control over the date of departure sometimes. Um, a lot of times the, the, the prepackaged tours will have set dates, set departure dates, and you can't change those because that's what they've contracted and that's what they are doing, whether you're going to be on it or not. Um, that can limit also... <clears throat> where you stay. So if you have, um, you know, Hilton points, <laughs> um, you're not necessarily going to be able to stay at a Hilton to collect points. The, the tour company has made these arrangements and you're going to be staying where that, where they have it set up. Um, so that's, you know, can be a negative if you, particularly if you, you know, really do a lot of time, you know, with points and miles, do a lot of with points and miles. Um, free time, you know, you're going to be limited with your free time. You don't, you don't get to plan it. Um, I mean, plan when you have it and how much you have. Obviously, you get to plan your free time, but you know how much free time you have um, and where that falls. You don't really get to plan that. That is that is decided by the uh, the tour company. Um, also, your other travel companions. A lot of times on prepackaged tours, if you don't fill up at least two thirds of the bus, they're going to stick another group with you, and so um, it you don't get to pick who travels with you. So it could. I don't know that there's always huge problems, but you know, there could be somebody on that, in that group you don't like. <laughs> um, and so there's just more things like that, that you just don't have the, have control over um, in the, the planning and the details. Um, like I said, if you don't fill up the bus, you know, your group will likely be part of a larger group, unless it is a, you know, a specific small group tour, like the, the African Safari, or, um, you know, some, some small group tours are like 10 to 12 people. Um, and they go on the, the, mini buses uh that, that they got um you know so that's always good but that's part of the research that you need to do is to determine you know is this a big group is it a small group and where does my group fit into all of that um sometimes a single deposit is required just to hold the space so this could be tricky for you if you go yeah this is the i've got a group that i think wants to go uh, you need to go ahead and make you know, reserve your spot within the tour. And they may ask you to put down a deposit for each of those slots that you want to hold. Um, so that's something that you all of a sudden are financially responsible for. Now you can still travel for free because as your people deposit, you will get that money back in the end. Um, but you might have to pay some money up front, depending on the group and the tour that you're trying to be a part of. And then sometimes it is a non-refundable, particularly with cruises. Um, you might have to pay for each uh, a deposit for each room that you want to hold. And sometimes, particularly with river cruises, those are not refundable. Um, so if you, the group breaks apart and doesn't, winds up not going, you don't get that money back. <laughs> um, or you might with other tours or other cruises. Um, some companies also only deal with travel agents. So you may find a great tour that you want to be a part of, but there are tour companies that only deal with travel agents. You would have to go through a travel agent to book on the, the tours that you, you are interested in.
Okay. Customized tours. Uh, a customized tour can be one of two things. Um, it can be, it can be something that is curated, created, bespoke just for you. Um, so it is something that is, you know, every element is something that you have asked for, or it could be something of a, a tour that you have, you've booked a basic tour that you've added things to or deleted things from, um, depending on the interest of your group and what you want to do. But it is something where it's not just, I, you read it in a book, you sign up for it <laughs> and that's it. So this is gonna be something where you put a little more effort into the, the special details of the, the trip. And so that can be, um, yeah, it can be much more appealing in that way because it is more geared towards what you want sometimes. Um, but again, it can be like all you know, brand new. You put it put it together with travel agent or tour company, or uh, you know, take something basic and add things to it. Um, with customized tours, it can it usually will just be your group because it's something that is being made just for you. Uh, now there are a couple of different things that can be done too if the group is small and it can be expensive, or you got just like a basic tour, like I was mentioning, and you're adding things to it. So you may have other people experiencing the basic tour part of it all, but on, you know, Wednesday, uh, your group is going and doing this and this other group is just left to their devices and, and you know, doing their own thing. So usually it's going to be uh, your own group, but it, it can be a situation where there might be other people there for a portion of the trip. Um, a customized store offers more flexibility in the itinerary because you get to add things. You can also, you know, delete things like we really don't want to go there. We're going to do this instead. And that, that usually can be taken care of. Um, you also will also have some flexibility in the, the departure dates as well with those. Um, you still benefit from the, the TC, the tour conductor credit. So that number usually will not change. And sometimes you can even set that number um, if it is a trip that you are you know, that is completely customized to you. Um, you know, if their normal operating is, you know, at 14, you get the 15th for free. You're like, yeah, that's great. But for this one and you're creating it, I want it, you know, after nine, the 10th one is me and I'm going for free. That a lot of times can be arranged, uh, but you still benefit from it either the TC credit, the, the tour conductor credit, either way. Um, with customized tours, you still have a tour guide. So you get to relax the, the, uh, Tour companies will still be in charge, um, you know, and all those responsibilities and liabilities will still all fall on them. So you actually will get to, you know, kind of relax and enjoy it. And that's what I just said there. Um, and again, you still get to pass the buck. <laughs> you are not the one that has to answer questions necessarily. You can, uh, particularly in the nitty gritty details, um, you know, you get to pass that on to uh, the travel agent or to uh, your, the tour company. So the cons of a customized tour, uh, those will typically cost more um, because it is something that is not within the tour company's normal realm of business. A lot of times it will cost more for them to get all these things done for you uh, because they're, they're negotiating with somebody new. Um, it may be more of what you want, but not always 100%. They may not have options to book all the different things that, that you want. And we are running out of time, so I'm just speeding up here. Um, it might require a substantial deposit up front again. Um, and again, are you able to you know, provide that money up front and get reimbursed from that? Um, there are limitations with hotels and other vendors, as I said. Um, if you take money rather than the, going through the tour company or the treasury, you become financially responsible for the costs and payments. Um, so if it is something that you customize, and you are having people pay you, and then you pay the tour company, um, you become financially responsible for everything. And there's a lot of liability and craziness in that. Um, and you'll see this more with when you're creating your own than if you are, or custom, than with customized tours. But sometimes with customized tours, people will pay for the basic tour, and then the tour conductor is in charge of the extras. And so people are paying them for the extras. And that's kind of a tricky and risky little game to play. Um, the, fancy, the finances could always be a little, you know, could be complicated as well. Okay, so the create your own for pros, it'll be everything you want. You get to pick everything that you want. The hotel, the food, the excursions, what day you're doing what, which is 
kind of fun if you're like to if you're a control freak and like to be in charge like me <laughs> um it will it, it will be only be your group there won't be these strangers lurking about um from people you know, from other groups that you don't necessarily uh know um you can set the pricing to cover your costs and even make money from it and this gets a little bit um tricky there too um with the planning of a trip, what we typically do as travel agents, we can do what we call an, uh, a value add to a trip, which is basically a markup to help cover a cost that isn't a part of the normal trip. And so that could be what we add to cover, you know, your idea, your, you know, if you need your still need your airfare covered, then that can be a value add that isn't going to be itemized as far as what your, uh, the people you've recruited are going to see but it will be something that will help cover your costs that aren't covered by the, the tour. Um, and sometimes you can wind up making a little bit of money off of it, but you don't want to make use it as a money making thing because then it turns into a whole different thing. <laughs> um, you claim ownership of the trip. It is your trip. You are the one who has designed it. You're the one who has created it. You're the one who has planned it. And there is a good, there's a sense of pride in all of that. And you get to reap the benefits of all uh, as a tour leader. So if there are additional, you know, benefits as being, you know, for booking the rooms, like you, you get all the points from all the rooms, <laughs> um, which can happen that way. If you are, if you book it as a group and you are the sole name on the, the rooms, you can get all the points for the rooms. Um, you can get the tour, you get, you know, the tour conductor credits or whatever. Um, any benefits like that, that happen with travel and in the places that you are working with, um, you get all those for yourself. They don't go to the tour companies or they don't go by the wayside. Um, the cons of creating your own, it's a lot more work than you probably realize. Um, and you're responsible for every aspect of the trip. Um, and that is a great responsibility and it takes a whole lot of work and a whole lot of time. So you have to be very time conscious of, of what you're doing and you know, making sure that you have the time to really do it all. Um, you will typically have the lack of bargaining and negotiating power that a travel agent would, or that a tour company has the, they're, they being professionals and, you know, working with companies regularly, they have that power that you don't have, particularly if it's your first time out. Um, you're the one responsible if anything goes wrong. You're the one who's going to be trying to fix the mess. If the, the bus breaks down, you've got to call, you've got to figure out how to get the next bus. And if you're in a foreign country where your you know, language skills are a little iffy in Italian, it might be uh, very frustrating to do that. Um, you bear all the legal and financial responsibility and liability for it. Um, if you're collecting the money, then it is you that is going to be held responsible for that. And again, the financial part can be complicated. Um, you know, how do you package it? If you've got, if you're paying a hotel here, a hotel there, a bus company here, a bus company there, you know, a lot of times they want a single payment for each of those. You can't charge, and so not not everyone's going to pay their individual portion of it. So it's really kind of a complicated thing. So you've got to kind of get a plan in place for all of that. Um, and that's what the next part is, complicated financials. The more complex the trip is, the more complex the financials are going to be. If you are just basically hopping on a bus and going from Dallas to uh, across the border in Oklahoma to go gambling <laughs> at Windstar, that's not a very complicated trip. And that's, good. that's really going to be an easy thing to financially figure out. But if you are got a group of 20 people and you're doing, you've got 17 different elements to a trip and each of them, each of those 17 different elements has to be paid in a different way, it can get really, really complicated. So you things to look about, you know, is it a single payment, single deposit, and then you make a payment, are there single payments to vendors? That can be really complicated if you've got, you know, 20 people charging the trip on their credit card and you've got to make one payment, what credit card do you use? But you can't use one, one of your traveler's credit cards for that. You're going to have to collect the money and then you pay it yourself. And then timing is very, very uh, key in all of that. Um, and that's just a, kind of an explanation of that. Um, yeah, and I said that all too. Sorry, I'm trying to hurry because I want, do want to have a, little, a few minutes for questions. Okay, so what to do next? Basically, if you're interested in doing this, you need to figure out what your who, what, where, when, and why, and how are. So we talked about the gardening club earlier. So let's say that you're a member of a local gardening club. That's going to be your who. That's going to be your focus group. 
say you want to go to the Floriad Expo. It's an event that is uh, happens in Europe. It happens every 10 years, kind of like Oprah Romergau, except it's for flowers and horticulture. Um, and that's a, a, you know, an event, entertainment, and education experience. So you've checked off your, your, your purposes there. Where is it? It's being held in Almere, Holland in 2022. And when is it 2022? So the 19th of April through the 9th of October, you decided you want to go for the 10th of May through the 22nd of May in 2022. And then how, obviously you're going to have need a plane to get there. Round trip to Amsterdam is probably a good place to fly in and then a bus tour. So you've answered all the questions. So what to do next? Well, on your own, you're going to have to research tours and tour companies, create your flyers, meet with the group and do a presentation and try and recruit as many people as you can, start collecting deposits and then follow up to get those payments. And so that's kind of, a, that's a very, you know, that takes place over a, an extended period of time. So, but that does say a lot of the work that you're gonna have to do, researching all the tours and tours, tour companies, um, creating flyers, are you good at graphic design like that? Uh, you know, are you good at making presentations, standing up in front of people and, and trying to convince them to, to travel with you, um, collecting the money and then making the payments. Uh, you know, that takes some uh, responsibility and organization, a lot of organization. Um, do you have a plan in place? How the payments are gonna be handled? Where, what are the deposit and cancellation and refund policies for every element of the trip? Cause it's gonna be different for each, each element. Um, do you have a liability waiver if you're doing it yourself? That's something that you will have to get with a lawyer and develop so that you, you know, try and get as much liability off of yourself. If you're planning on doing this to make money, you're gonna to have to set yourself up as an LLC. So you see how all this is all of a sudden is not necessarily free if you're doing it on your own. If you would like us to help you with it, <laughs> here's, what, here's, here's how it could be even freer for you. Contact us, we'll do the research. We do all the research on the tour companies and find you the best uh, option for you. Uh, if you want to create something, you know, completely customized, we can do that for you. We will create the flyers for you. Uh, we can give you a PDF version of that and send it to you. You might, if you're you know, going to pass out those flyers to somebody you can, or you can email it, but if you're going to pass it out, you might have to pay for copies of that. Or if you're local, we can handle those copies for you. Um, we will meet with you and your group and do a presentation. It might have to be, if you're local, we can do it, certainly find some place to meet. Um, if you are not local, we can certainly do a Zoom presentation. And then we collect all the deposits and payments. So you see how all of a sudden you don't have to do a whole lot of work on that end. You're, you just basically have to bring people to us um, and we, we do all the rest. And that's kind of where all this is going. You still reap the benefits of getting that tour conductor because you are basically a recruiter bringing people onto the trip and you get to go and enjoy the trip like a traveler, like a tourist, and rather than being the responsible person in charge and having to do all that. What we like to do is plan those trips for you. Um, it doesn't cost you any money. It, it's uh, you know something that we do regularly and, and do all the time. So we are we are happy to do that. Um, but it is a great way to travel and it's a great way for you to reap the benefits of you know the group travel and not really have to um, worry so much about doing all of the nitty gritty work. So particularly if it's your first time, if it's your first time, we you know, we suggest that you use a travel agent. That's gonna be your best option and you still reap the benefits of the TC. If you are an experienced person, you've done this multiple times, then yeah, you might be better <laughs> at you know, going at it alone to get exactly what you want. Uh, but we always recommend you use a travel agent and we would be happy to help you with all of that. So I know I went very quickly, um, especially there at the end, we have about five minutes if you have questions. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now, if that's okay. And I'll come back on to the end. Okay, so I know I spoke very quickly and all that, and I apologize, but I just wanted to make sure that you all had um, all the information. So anybody have any questions? Okay, let's switch over to Facebook and see what we got going on over there. Um, how much does it cost in general to leave? Yeah, so it's that's again, it could be that you you have to wind up paying airfare and things like that. But the idea is that you shouldn't have to pay anything. Um, maybe there's a little bit of cost in um, if you're not local print, printing flyers to distribute to your church group or to your gardening club or um, to you know your rotary club or whoever. So 
that um, it, it should be a minimal cost, if any cost at all. How do fundraisers work? Okay, so the fundraisers kind of work a little bit like the, you know, the, the, the value add that I was talking about earlier. So what we would do is, and the cruise lines really like to do this as well, and they will even give money back to the organization that is part of the, uh, that you're trying to raise the money for. Um, but so how it would work is, you know, the basic trip would be, you know, $1,700, we'll say, per person. And then um, that's what if somebody just signs up on the cruise would get to sign up on the fundraising cruise, um, the cost may be $1,900. That extra $200 that uh, value add on is going to be the $200 as a $200 donation to the organization. And you can set that amount. And sometimes the cruise lines will have a, a cap on how, how much they'll do. Like maybe it might be 150 on Royal Caribbean. Um, so they might set a limit on how much you can do a value add, um, but they can, yeah, but that many goes back to the, the organization that you're running it for, that you're doing the fundraiser for. Um, yeah, and then, like, like I said, there's a, a small, very small percentage of what the cruise line makes, um, they will donate as well. Um, where are you located? We are located in Dallas. Uh, so we are in the North Oak Cliff area of Dallas, uh, but we deal with people all over the country. So we are, are happy to do that. Um, that's why the, you know, with Zoom, that's good. That would, you know, if you need to do a presentation, we can certainly do that. Um, you know, we, we certainly do it over Zoom. We're capable of doing that. Although I might not have shown my IT skills too well tonight, um, but if you're local, we can certainly find some place around in the Dallas Fort Worth area to do that. Um, you know, I've, I've traveled to, Plano and Fort Worth and, and beyond even for, for presentations. So, um, do kids count, <laughs> do kids count as people? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, okay. So sometimes they count as people. That's got, uh, yeah. So with tour groups, yeah, so that's, that's kind of a tricky one with tour groups. Yes, they count as people. So you're, you're paying for basically a spot on a bus. So they count as, as people. On a cruise, though, they don't necessarily count as people. The, like the only people that count are like double occupancy, like the first and second person. The third and fourth person in the room don't really count. So if you have like nine pay, full paying passengers, that is basically four and a half rooms, state rooms that have to be paid for um, to get that that that's that free slot. Does that make sense? Um, so it doesn't matter how many people are in the room; only the first two count towards the free slot on cruises. But with tour companies, it, they do count as people if they're if they're full paying. Now, if it's a if they don't pay full fare, like sometimes they'll have a discount. You know, up to twelve years is such and such. Uh, and it's, you know, maybe a third less than what you would pay as an adult. Those don't count. So it gets a little bit tricky there. So you just have to read the, you know, we'll just have to go through a little fine print on all of that to determine that. But yeah, um, they most of the time count as people. <laughs> uh, that makes me laugh. Um, my friend is a life coach. How would it work for her to do a conference on a trip? You know, that's always good. Um, they're a little more complicated. Um, and, and certainly you want to plan, and I think that's a uh, question about that, about how far in advance should you plan the trip? Um, if you've got something like that, where somebody's giving us, uh, you've got a speaker um, or a, a local celebrity, I, I know somebody that um, had like one of their local drag queens, you know, on a, a, do a, a, as a group on a cruise. Um, you, you, you want to plan those earlier. Um, yeah, I would say at least a year in advance. Um, and the way that it works is that we do the value add-on. It's, it's basically a markup and, and to cover uh, the cost of the drag queen and or whoever, you know, or the, or the life coach, um, whoever you have there um, to help cover speaking fees and, and, and that kind of stuff. The tour conductor thing gets a little bit trickier because that's, you know, do you want the tour conductor to go to them or are you going to use it? And then how are you going to cover the cost of their trip? So that's something to think through. I mean, hopefully there would be enough people that you could, you could get multiple TCs for it. Um, 
Yeah, so you do a value add on to cover the, the things. Now, you can also, you know, to make it more appealing to whoever is your uh, your life coach or speaker, if they have uh, something that they sell, if they have a, a book that they sell or something like that, there is a way to that they can bring those on board and sell them to the people, a part of their group. Um, there's a tax thing that they have to worry about, but um, but even to get around that, what you can do is like the book becomes a part of the, the value add-on. So you add even more to the value add because you're getting the book and then you don't have to pay the tax on it that way. Um, but there, yeah, there are ways to, to do that. It's just uh, depending on what you want to do, um, you know, pl planning that as early as possible is the best thing, particularly if you're not, you know, charting a whole, whole ship um, or, you know, a whole bus, then you've got to work around, you um, like the spaces that are available when when they have time to give speeches or do whatever the performance part of it is um, that they're doing that you're paying them to be there for if that makes sense i think i've talked a little bit of a circle there um but yeah if you're planning a trip the, uh, you know we're we're working on a, a big group thing right now and it is two years out still from when the actual trip would occur um and so we're, we're, we're doing something similar with, a, 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 I'll say, a local celebrity that we're, we're working, trying to work with. Um, and so that's two years out even from now. So the idea is that, you know, with that, with it being somebody really well known, you want to plan something, you, you want to get all the details together so that when you advertise it, um, they've got plenty of time to make those decisions and it has plenty of time to come together. Um, and particularly with whoever you work with, you want to make sure that you've got the time to reserve particular areas for whatever the activity is that you want them to do, whether it's the drag queen doing a show or the life coach giving a speech, um, a motivational speech, or, uh, you know, your quilters getting a room of quilting together. <laughs> you know, you've got to be able to reserve those rooms, but you can only do that in advance. Now, if you're doing a trip to, like I said earlier, to, you know, you're in Dallas, you're going across the border in Oklahoma to, to Windstar to go uh, gambling, those don't require as much. I mean, I've been still planning, you know, three months in advance for that at least, but for something big, the bigger it is, the more complicated, the more time you want involved with all of that. So I know that's a lot of information, <laughs> a lot. I know it's talking really fast. So, um, any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you for listening to me tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, we'll have Michelle Farr, <clears throat> excuse me, from uh, Royal Caribbean with us, and she'll be talking about all things Royal Caribbean. And uh, you know, they're announcing all sorts of stuff. Last week, uh, you know, they announced they're starting to sell again, uh, and I think something even came out today. I didn't have time to read the email, uh, but yeah, it looks like uh, going out of Bermuda and, and some other places. So, uh, real excited to hear that. Uh, She's wonderful. I've, I've done her for several years now, and she's just one of my favorites. The week after that, we've got Virgin Voyages, um, which I'm excited about. It's a new, very new. They haven't even started sailing yet, um, so we'll get to hear from them. Uh, and then the week after that is Rocky Mountaineer for train voyages through uh, Canada and the U.S., and I'm really, really excited about that. So come back uh, next week for Royal Caribbean. Same time, same place. Uh, it's a different Zoom, but again, uh, you can go to Facebook and like us there, uh, and you'll get the information uh, for those events coming up. And uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Have a good night.